derive the this drift velocity and ohm's law on the basis of free electron theory so derivation of drift velocity and ohm's law So very blur. Yes. So blur. What about? Blur, sir. Blur. Screen is blur. Did you get your point? What was that? Screen is not clear. Sir, maybe due to the network issue, the screen is not visible. clearly okay derivation of drift velocity and ohm's law by free electron theory clear this clear no same thing this figure yes sir clear So you dictate and write, sir. Then we'll manage. Okay. So we'll draw the same figure which we have drawn during drift velocity work. Again, the same figure will be drawn. So suppose this is the conductor. the length of the conductor is l area of cross section is a and the position of the core atom is like this the same figure which we have drawn on that day so core atom is position is like this So free electrons are present. Their position is maybe different at the at same instant. Its position is different. They may move in different direction. So these are the position of free electrons at any instant. If we take the snap at any point, any instant, like this, it becomes. Okay, so these are the position of free electrons. So these free free electrons are moving in haphazard way. When we have not applied any electric field, these electrons are moving in haphazard manner. So when we find the resultant of velocity of all the electrons. what will be the resultant different electron has got different velocity okay one may have to okay, suppose this is u1 this side u2 may be that side u3 may be this side u4 may be somewhere this side so different electron are moving in different direction when we have not applied any electric field they are moving in haphazard manner so what will be the resultant of all these velocity will it be zero or any non zero value it will be zero sir it will be zero why because they are in the random they are in a random manner and the com component will get cancelled either way okay. if it is non zero then what will be what should be displacement will be we must, we must get current Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. If there is non-zero resultant, that means electrons are moving. Resultant is there in one direction, so we must get current. The flow of electrons will be there, but that is not the case. So that's why we say 
the resultant of all this initial speed will be so if u1 u2 u3 u n are the velocity of free electrons at t equal to 0 u1 u2 u3 u n are the velocities of all the free electrons. At t equal to zero. That is when no electric field is applied or no potential is maintained. Then what will be resultant of all these velocities will become will be Now suppose we apply electric field. Now, when electric field is applied, <coughs> when we have connected it, this is connected by the source this way. So these electrons will start moving in this direction. What is the direction of electric field? Left to right or right to left? So electric field will be in this direction, okay? No? This is the direction of electric field. But electrons will experience force in this direction. Force experienced by each electron will be in this direction. As electron is negatively charged, so it will experience force in opposite of electric field. Or just to understand, this is the positive terminal of the battery, so it will start. So when a potential difference V is applied or V is maintained, we can say. Across its two terminal. A uniform electric field is E, which is given by V by L. This magnitude of this E will be. E over L. So when a potential difference is maintained, each electron will start experiencing force.
So the force experienced by each electron F will be minus E E. If you are interested only in magnitude, then E E only. Direction of this will be opposite to the electric field because E is having negative charge. Electron is having negative charge. An acceleration of each electron. Force by mass. So minus E E over M. Due to this electron, this acceleration, or with this acceleration, these electrons will start moving towards their side. But what will happen when it starts moving? The electrons will collide with each other, as well as it will collide with core atom. So once it collide with core atom, whatever velocity it has gained, it will become Zero. After striking, suppose this one, it will strike within no time. So its collision is after suppose two hours time. This will collide after some time. Maybe somewhere it will go, then it will collide. This one may collide till here, or there are different places. So here it may collide after coming here, or this will collide maybe longer duration. So each electron will suffer collision with core atom in. Different time. All are not colliding in same time. If this is colliding with this one in 0.1 or one nanosecond, other may collide with other may maybe in 10 nanosecond, maybe other one 50 nanosecond. So that will depend on the chance. No, someone will get chance within no time. Someone get chance far away. It will move without colliding. So this collision will different electron will have the collision at different instant. Naturally, if we find the velocity, average velocity of all the electron at any instant, then at that particular instant, velocity of this electron, velocity of this electron, velocity of all the electrons we find, an average of that, that will be the drift velocity. So this is suppose equation number one we are doing giving this one equation number one put after that we <clears throat> so with this acceleration the electron will start moving towards the positive terminal of the battery towards the source. Or towards the lower field, we can say, <clears throat> or lower, higher potential. But during this movement, it will collide with core atom. Suppose it has come here and collided. That will depend on what was the resultant. Suppose this is the initial velocity, acceleration is in this direction, so resultant may be in some other direction. So suppose it has come here and then collided with this. Then, just before collision, its velocity, whatever it was, after collision, it will become again zero. Then again, it will start from zero. Another collision. After colliding, again zero, and again it will start from zero because it is constantly experiencing a force in this direction. So somehow all the electrons have to reach here. The force is there. So their goal is here. 
so though they will collide with each other wins each other and the core atom but then also they will not stop they will have to reach the goal their tendency okay we have to reach up to here positive terminal of the goal so when whatever number will be there same number of fresh electron will come here again they will do the same thing <coughs> so this these electrons will suffer collision with four atom in different interval of time let this duration be p1 p2 p3 and pn so this we call so what is the maximum velocity of first electron look at the time of collision their velocity is are v1 v2 v3 v4 one you start should afterwards you can give it to some number 2 this a will be this much afterwards we start to that value <coughs> so these are the velocity maximum velocity gained by this particular electron first electron this much second electron this much third electron this much like that it will be so if we find the average of these all velocities that we call drift velocity so drift velocity will be v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus vn by n that is the drift velocity now how will you find this therefore what will be this v1 will be u1 plus a t1 acceleration is same for all the electrons time interval of collision is different v2 is u2 plus a t2 Similarly, this V N will be U N, and we have taken capital U N plus T N. Thank <laughs> you. 
So if we add these all, what we are getting? So this V1 plus V2 plus V3 Vn will be equal to this all. U1 plus U2 plus U3 plus Un plus this A will be common. E1 plus E2 plus E3 so on up to Un. Okay. Now, what is this value? U1 plus U2 plus U3. What is this value? This is zero. No. What happened? Are you listening or sleeping? Listening, sir. Yes, sir. Zero. Okay. So this one will become zero. And this is there. So this V one plus V two plus V three V N this is equal to zero plus A. P1 plus P2 if we divide by n both sides This is the average velocity of all the electron at that particular time. Or maximum average velocity of all the electrons we can say. And that is our drift velocity. So this is our drift velocity. That means this drift velocity is A and this we call tau. Where we start what? P1 plus P2 plus P3 by N is the average time interval between two consecutive collisions. of electron with four atom when electric field is applied.
and is known as and this time interval we call relaxation time so how we define relaxation time so it is the average time interval between two consecutive collision of electron with core atom first here it is it has collided then next time where it is colliding so average if you find the average of all these electrons the collision time that we call relaxation time or here you can say this one will become what was that minus e e over m this one will be that part of it और सर कंफ्यूजन नो सर सो दिस इज फर्दर वी से न्यू ई Where mu is e power m and is known as mobility. Sometimes we give the symbol mu e when we discuss semiconductor. At that time, mu e and mu h will come, or mu n and mu p will come. Mu n means negative, and mu h means positive hole. Mu e electron and hole. Here we can write mu only, no problem. So only mu can you can write, or whatever you may say. But when we will discuss semiconductor, in that case, two symbol will come. Mobility formula is same. E tower m, where the e is the charge of that particular particle, which is free to move. If it is electron, or if it is hole, or if it is iron. In case of electrolyte, it may be iron also. So that e means charge of that particular moving particle, which is free to move. Okay, so this V D we got. <coughs> E to over m and e, or simply mu e, we can say. <coughs> Now, as we have derived the drift velocity, since this drift velocity is what this v d we have already done that was j over n e. But this n is number of free electrons. Per unit volume. This already we have been at this relation. So if we compare this three and four, so 
Okay, yeah, this one, if we give the vector sign, then this is also negative, no? Drift velocity of electron is this direction, but current density in this direction. So this also left and right negative. If we are writing only magnitude, then VD is J over NE. So then this positive sign will have okay. negative sign. So J is this much. Because drift velocity and current density both are in opposite direction. J is always along that electric field. And drift velocity here of electron is in that direction. So for electron it will be negative. For body, positive charge, same direction. VD and J. <coughs> okay. So when we compare these two, we are getting this one. So what is that J now? So this J is n e square tau over m. That means this j is directly proportional to e. This is Ohm's law in vector form. What this j is? J is a constant, this is constant, that will depend on what? N, number of free electron per unit volume, that is nature of material. E, charge of electron. Tau, average time interval between two collisions. That will depend on how the four atoms are arranged. If they are very close, naturally time P, time interval will be less. If we increase the temperature, naturally average speed of electron will become more. So time interval will be frequent. Time will be less. This is mass of electron. So this only depend on temperature and nature of material. This is the constant. This does not depend on electric field or any other thing. So that's why we say this J is sigma E. That sigma, what we call, and this is Ohm's law. Well, our four, so this one also you write five. But tomorrow we start from here only. So this sigma is constant that depend only on nature of material or nature of conductor. And its temperature. And we call it conductivity. And 
can be known as conductivity. This is how we can derive drift velocity and Ohm's law by using this free electron theory. Sometimes three marks question is asked of this one. Derive Ohm's law by using free electron theory. So we have to write it to here. So according to this, J is sigma e. Now from the next day we shall see all the relations which we have derived in class 10 or Two days back, resistance, conductance, resistivity, all these we can get from here. And what will be the factors affecting resistance and resistivity? Okay, so shall we leave up to here? Pandey is very hungry. Shivam, you are present or left? Okay, still present. Okay, so we leave up to here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.